Meanwhile, the military has dismissed the allegations. At RESEC, we are also going to do our own investigation to find out exactly what, what happened. I think that for, for us here, we've been working with them. Workers of a Northern Electricity Distribution Company detained on UDS City campus in Tamale by staff and security personnel of the institution after the school was disconnected from the national grid. So I give a salute to my people that they should disconnect. Upon the disconnection, the security man and the, the, the staff gave instructions that the car should not move out. So and National Executive Committee of uh, the NPP to decide on a date for its presidential and parliamentary primaries, which ended inconclusively. It has been resolved that uh, as a party, we need to do further consultation on the timelines for the presidential and parliamentary elections. And still to come on CNR Extra, concerned second-hand dealers association threatens to resort to legal redress or demonstration if attempts to get the Energy Commission to suspend the ban on the importation of second-hand appliances fails. We as a dealers, about 200,000 people are going to be affected. About 99% of this population are going to be affected. CNR Extra is live on City TV, and as usual, you can join us with your thoughts, submissions, and contributions via WhatsApp line 0204-447033. And you can join us on YouTube as we stream live there on City Tube. Jude, Mensa Duncan, good morning. Good, good morning, Philip, and of course, good morning to all our viewers out there. So far, so good. How is it going your Friday? I mean, it is, it's still very early in the morning. Not very early, but like, it's still early in the day, let me put it that way. So hopefully, it ends on a really sweet level. I mean, it's been a, a really long week. Okay. Me, so so let's, let's go straight to the first story, and we are going to the Boku Enclave, because the Upper East Regional Security Council says that investigations um, will soon commence into all alleged killings of persons in Boko by the military. Let's bring you that insert. The Upper East Regional Security Council, RECSEC, says it will soon commence investigations into all alleged killings of persons in Boko by the military. On Wednesday, February 1, 2023, they accused the military of allegedly shooting and killing seven persons while on a peacekeeping meeting in the area. The Upper East Regional Security Council, RECSEC, however, says the incident will be investigated to unravel the facts. The ethnic conflict between Kusasis and Mampusis in Boku caused government to deploy the Ghana Armed Forces 11th Mechanized Infantry Battalion to the Upper East Region to keep peace in Boku and protect the borders against violent extremists. But in recent times, residents of Boku have accused the military of brutality and alleged killings of civilians. In December 2022, the military was accused by residents of allegedly killing a woman at Sabungari. On January 26, 2023, residents of Boku accused the military of allegedly killing two persons, namely Siedu Dauda, aged 60, and Salifu Imoro, 59, at Patelemi for breaking the curfew. On Wednesday, February 1, 2023, the military were again accused of allegedly killing seven persons in line of duty. The situation has exacerbated tension in Boko as residents demand justice for the deceased. Member of Parliament for Boko Central, Mahama Yariga, in a statement, described the actions of the military as unprofessional and vowed to seek justice for the deceased. In a crunch meeting on Thursday held by the Upper East Regional Security Council, RECSEC, to assess the situation in Boku, 
chairman of Rexec, who doubles as regional minister, Stephen Yakubu, said Rexec will commission investigations into all alleged killings by the military. Rexec, we are also going to do our own investigation to find out exactly what, what happened. I think that for, for us here, we've been working with the military for a very long time. In fact, this incident uh, just happened, but we've been working with the military, and the military uh, working in Boko, even within my time here, is almost about, uh, maybe about 18 months or something like that. And it's very unfortunate that this, this has happened. Uh, what I can see now is that we are looking into it. Rexit also mourned with relatives of the deceased and called on all stakeholders to work at bringing lasting peace to Boko. As a regional minister, I am in mourning with them, I sympathize with them, big condolences. Uh, but the end matter is that we need peace. And uh, if uh, we, we have peace, then we will not have all this. So whilst we mourn, whilst we try to find out what is going on, what went wrong and all that, we should also be thinking of how do we make the peace so that we don't have more people going through this. For certain news, Frederick Awuni. So as RESSEG is demanding for investigations to uh, be conducted into the issue, the Ghana Armed Forces has denied all allegations that have been leveled against them concerning the killing of persons at Boko. Let's bring you that insert. Ghana Armed Forces has refuted allegations that soldiers deployed to Boko to restore calm and maintain order have killed seven locals. The allegations were first made by the Member of Parliament for Boko Central, Mahama Yariga, who indicated that the military shot indiscriminately into some locals running for cover, killing seven of them in the process. But the military, in a statement, dismissed the said allegations and chronicled several incidents of violent attacks in the area. The military described the claims as false and unfounded. The military, however, stated that they um, engaged a group of armed men and neutralized six of them. So the issue at Boko is not new. Reason is uh, it's been happening for some time. The National Peace Council, if my memory serves me right, came in to also uh, have some conversation around it and was asking the persons in there to ensure that at least peace reigns in uh, the area. Just 2023, beginning of 2023, yeah. we are hearing another issue in Boko and uh, the chaos there. It's uh, not, it doesn't seem to be ending anytime soon. I mean, Philip, first of all, sympathies to the families of people um, who've lost their loved ones as a result of this um, long standing ethno political conflict. And um, we understand it's been around for decades and, and it's been fested, uh, it's been going on between the Kusasis and the Mampuses mm. uh, in the Boku area in the northeastern part of the country. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite unfortunate that some of these things. Uh, we still have to deal with it in this year. We understand it's over um, parti um, partisan politics, over land, over chieftaincy disputes. Mm. Even the sighting of market areas have been some of the reasons why some of these clashes have happened over the years. And, and for me, it's, it's quite unfortunate that we still have to deal with some of these things every now and then. I mean, you recall in 2000, about 68 people were killed as a result of some of these clashes. And, and for me... Boku, historically, has been a very BRICS in the early 90s, was a BRICS um, economic thriving area. But as a result of these repetitive, constant clashes, you get, you, you realize that the economic gains the, the city or the town would have sought to make is gradually being wiped of away. Of course, because uh, people Ex there are all trying to flee the town. Ex nurses are moving. The last time this similar situation happened, the nurses were complaining that they can't work anymore. Schools, are Schools closed were down. closed down. So, Teachers weren't mm. there anymore. And even people who would go there to do business wouldn't go to that area. And that is exactly so. So investor confidence is almost non-existent there. And for me, really, the challenge over the years is about government inactions 
actions and inactions in resolving um, um, the set conflicts. Over the years, as a result of, like I'm saying, government's inactions, the, the antagonisms really has sort of crystallized in the area and there's no helping at all in terms of bringing development to the said community. We want to look at the reasons why some of these things are happening and, and to some extent some impressions from some Western security analysts who've been looking at the situation in Burkina Faso will tell you that, oh, I mean, there's some level of violent extremism, and, and for that reason, we see some of these clashes going on there. But you speak to the locals or residents yeah. in the community, they tell you that, look, the unemployment situation in Boku is nothing to write home about. But more importantly, some of the, the reasons for these clashes is as a result of um, weapon proliferation. I mean, in 2000, when 68 people died, it was, it was sticks and machetes and cutlasses they were using in the fights. Now, what we see is um, automatic weapons and guns <laughs> used. And you ask yourself, how will an ordinary person in Baku how do they get it? be able to afford some of these weapons? I mean, check on the internet. According to Statista, an average um, assault rifle is around $789, an AK-47 is $786. Some even go on to state um, $1,335 for um, an assault rifle. And I'm asking myself, how now you understand that at the, at the sound of a gunshot, one of the factions would quickly go on social media already claiming to be victims uh, you don't even know whether they are the instigators, but because of how social media operates, they go on to social media claiming to be victims and, of course, promising reprisal attacks and all of these things. So, social media weapon proliferation has been the bane in tackling um, the issue. Of course, unemployment is there, and of course, the threat of food mm. security appears to be one of the issues um, um, facing them. And, and for me, really, when you listen to some of these international security experts speak, they say, oh, the threat of, of violent extremism is sort of fueling it. But um, they go on to say that Boku is sort of the weakest link with Ghana's attempts at fighting or combating extremism. But it's these issues of, of weapon proliferation, of, 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 of social media usage. And for me, that is where the Ministry of Communication or the whole government apparatus, starting from the presidency, comes into play. I feel the president should take up this issue in resolving it. I mean, successive governments have tried, mm. from President Rawlings, from President um, John Ajakumpu, for even the late um, President John um, Evans Atamios, all of them sought to provide some solutions, but they were not lasting. Also because of some of the political gains but each if party... they are providing solutions, mm. the question is, are uh, the feuding factions mm. ready to get this issue resolved? Because there was a time when uh, this issue was happening, there was a committee that is set for... Year 2022 said that at least the group that has moved out should join so that they should find a lasting solution to it. The group that moved out also indicated that every now and then when solutions are brought uh, in, uh, it looks like the both factions do not want to yes. uh, implement so, them. So, so, so the issue still persists. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 get, I get that point. And, and for me, I don't even think it's healthy trying to go back to reasons why initial talks broke down. For me, I think this government should just take it up on a fresh note and say we need to bring an end to this some way, somehow. I mean, we understand that chieftaincy disputes really uh, is one of the leading reasons for the incessant clashes here. Now, yes. Hassan Ayaga is on the NDC side. Get them into, whip them in line into government's effort and i totally agree with you watching the report okay. i saw church billboards mm, over mm, there mm. the national peace council the ghana pentecostal mm. um, um, council but it should be an effort being led well, by the president at least we we know that some something has to be done about it but the mp for the area is a uh, mahama yarega and he also came out with uh, well, he said that Did he said the allegation. You said Hassan Ayer. Sorry, well, Mama Ayer. So uh, the uh, members of parliament from the Upper East region, led by Kleto Saboka, who is the MP for Zebula, they have in note noted that at least investigations must be done so that they would unravel the reasons or whether or not the military 
uh, officers uh, engaged in the killing of some innocent persons there. The Upper East Regional Security Council is also appealing to the feuding factions in Boko to stop engaging in the exchange of fire with military officers. Let's move away from Boko issues and come down here in the Greater Accra region, where management of West Hills Mall in Accra, they have clarified the sequence of events that led to the death of a 32-year-old man uh, on their premises. The management of the West Hills Mall in Accra has clarified the sequence of events that led to the death of a 32-year-old man on his premises. Shadra Kalo died after an altercation with a police officer at the mall. A video of the incident has since gone viral with the police launching an investigation. Now, the mall management has released a statement explaining that a surveillance system captured the attempts of the officer to apprehend Mr. Alo. Accounts from eyewitnesses and mall security indicated that the officers suspected Mr. Lowe was in possession of illegal substances and asked to search his bag. The mall said his cameras captured an initial struggle as the officer attempted to handcuff the suspect. The suspect eventually stopped struggling, appearing to be unwell. He was transported to the on-site medical facility where he was pronounced dead on arrival. So management of West Hills Moor has clarified the issue. The family of uh, the deceased is also having another uh, side of the story. But the most important thing is at least uh, investigations have been launched into the matter. And all what we seek to get at the end of the day is to really know whether the killing was done by police officers, by some security personnel there, by civilians or whoever. Uh, committed that heinous crime should at least be brought to a book after the uh, investigations has been done. Uh, I mean, uh, our sincere condolence to the family of um, the gentleman who lost his life under very bizarre um, um, circumstances at the West Hills Mall. I mean, it was imperative and, and very important that the um, managers of the mall came out swiftly with a statement explaining their um, side or recounting their side of, of the story because it's not pleasant news for um, and patrons of the mall mm. when some of these things happen. And I expect the police to also do the same, um, explaining the circumstances because you understand that it involved a police officer. Mm -hmm. This issue, I mean, it's within the rights of, of the family of the late um, gentleman to take it up and seek justice if they feel um, there were some um, really shady occurrences and, and once they do that we'll probably un understand or have a better idea but it's unfortunate um, we don't we don't want some of these things happening in very, our social places and we expect that um, even when people are, are misbehaving uh, the law or law enforcement finds a way to go around it without it having to result in, in, in situations and instances like this. So our, our condolences to the Bay family well, and we plead with the police um, to be a little patient when they are dealing with some of these um, well, instances. Well, uh, with, with they being a little patient, sometimes some of the civilians I are mean, you also measure, very, very you measure, you measure the, the, uh, they are hard not to crack. Yeah, some I, mean, of you, the civilians. I, I totally <laughs> understand and I, I agree with you, but I'm saying you measure the threat mm. and, and apply the same level of force. I mean, mm -hmm. if it was with a weapon, then you know how to go about it. If it was just someone misbehaving and going all around, you know, if it was with a rifle, or you, mm -hmm. a rifle, you know how to. Mm -hmm. So um, they should just measure the level of force and apply it when necessary. Uh, that's it. So the police has launched the investigation into the matter, and uh, we hope to uh, get to know whatever comes out of it. Uh, let's go to the UDS campus, uh, city campus in Tamale, and the loss control team of uh, the Northern Electricity Distribution Company uh, yesterday was detained on the campus by staff of uh, the institution and also some security personnel at the UDS campus. Let's bring you this insert and that tells you why that action took place. Loss control team of the Northern Electricity Distribution Company was on Thursday detained on the UDS city campus in Tamale by staff and security personnel of the institution after the team disconnected the electricity connection to the school over non-payment of bills. According to NEDCO, the institution owes a total of 447,000 cities of electricity bills 
Speaking to the media, the supervisor of the lost control team said the head of security at the UDS city campus ordered for the main entrance of the university to be locked until the control team restores power to the institution. The incident, which lasted for almost two hours, took the intervention of the military for the staff to be released. Here is the supervisor of the lost control team speaking to the media. In fact, we were sent to come and disconnect the institution. We are only as much as 447,000 UDS city campus at uh, Tripoli. So when we came, I asked, we identify ourselves and we told them why we are here. They refused us to carry out the disconnection. So I gave instructions to my people that they should disconnect. Upon the disconnection, the security man and the, the, the staff gave instructions that the car should not move out, so they should lock us inside. I mean, they should not allow us to go out until we reconnect them. So that's why we are here. That's why we are still here. There's the car. They say they don't allow the car to move. That's the gate. They say they don't allow the move. So as you can see, they are still locking the gate. Actually, we, we, we do monitoring with the military. So it's not like the military were there and we are going to... There's an agreement that any time we are doing monitoring, the military should work with us. So it's an exercise that we are doing. So when the issue happens, we have to call for the enforcement. As you can see, this is simple disconnection. And look at the risk involved. And this is a government institution. Can you imagine what would happen if it is an uh, individual who is... It's going to be worse. Meanwhile, the management of UDS has been reacting to the matter. We were not aware, especially regarding today, not that we were not aware of the entire exercise, but today, the security on duty in particular were unaware of the fact that BRA officials uh, were coming to perform any official exercise on the premises. And so when they arrived there, the security insisted that they wanted to see some official communication between UDS and VRA NECO, permitting them to come and do, perform whatever exercise they had come there to perform. In the absence of such uh, 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 an evidence, they then said, wait until we confirm with our management that this exact exercise has been endorsed. In a related development, the staff groups of Northern Electricity Distribution Company are demanding the removal of the managing director, Osmani Aludiba Ayuba, over non-performance. In a petition presented to the board of directors of the company, the staff group stated, among other things, worse financial performance of NETCO, lack of clear strategy for the company, exorbitant sole source procurement of point-of-sale devices, and worsening distribution losses. Since Mr. Ayuba took office as the managing director some three years ago, as part of steps to press home their demand, the staff from the beginning of February have hoisted red banners across all the operational areas and service centers in NETCO. According to the petition, the distribution loss alone within the Tamale metropolis is estimated at 12 million cities of revenue each year. They also allege that the leadership of the company has spent over 40 million USD since the last three years on needless projects. The board has scheduled Friday 3rd to meet with the leadership of the agitating staff. According to the staff, the outcome of the meeting will determine the way forward. From Tamale, I am Daina Ungwan. For... So staff, some staff members of NETCO are de demanding the removal of their boss and also uh, the loss control unit or loss control team of NETCO. Uh, they were detained on UDS campus. And yeah. yesterday, when the, the supervisor was interviewed on eyewitness views, he, he said that when they were done with the operation, they went to the registrar of the institution, and they, were, mm. they were like, oh, okay, we, we want to go, and that we've, we've been locked. Then they said the registrar, the registrar was like, okay, you go. <laughs> if only the security will allow you <laughs> to go out. And he was like, do you know that this is tantamount to like kidnapping? <laughs> it was an interesting conversation yesterday. But I, I think that owing some amount like... 447,000 Ghana cities and now power distribution companies are struggling to rig in revenue or to pay uh, the companies that they are also pulling some sort of power from to distribute to these organizations and institutions. I think that the need for should be done.
earlier this week we were discussing about how the ecg yes is also battling with issues of revenue collection meet their revenue targets and as a result have to go to the public accounts committee and struggling to pull out the facts and all of that i mean it's it's unfortunate the the situation in the university uds um, city campus for me is is, is a no 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 mm. i mean you shouldn't be seen to be tolerating um, some of these um, instances i mean this is anarchy really if you want to um, um, look at it carefully and we are not a lawless state why would you take the law into your own hands and restrict the movement of um, officials who's only ah, but you came to my place to disconnect me so why do you want to go without not connecting me doing their job uh -huh. and, and for me it's unfortunate um the university management should really get their acts together again you can't be seen to be doing some of these things and as an academic institution um, a knowledge base of, of the country quite a substantial knowledge base of the country you expect that you should be seen to be doing the right thing so for me um as, as no i expect investigations to be conducted as soon as possible but even before that they should go and make sure that they pay their their bills where, where they are faltering and ensure that some of these things do not come up again because it doesn't put the investor in a good um, um, um light at all well it hasn't put the investor in a good light and that's yeah, the yeah, public yeah, that's relations it. officer <laughs> don't worry <laughs> it's just an interesting development coming from that place and i think all stakeholders involved must ensure that uh, this is resolved they Head of Public Relations of the institution also yesterday made mention of uh, the fact that, well, they've been able to resolve the issue and that uh, they are at uh, a very good point of uh, making sure that the debt they are owing NETCO is paid. That is some 447,000 Ghana cities. You are still watching CNR Extra on CCTV. Still to come. Concerned second-hand dealers association threatens to resort to legal redress or demonstration if attempts to get the Energy Commission to suspend the ban on importation of second-hand appliances fails. Can you stay with us? We'll be back with more stories. Plus is a fully skimmed evaporated milk. Creamy Plus is available in a shop near you. This message has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Staying with us here on CNR Extra. You can join us with your thoughts, submissions, and contributions via WhatsApp line 0204447033. Let's take you to the Ashanti region where the Asokore Mampon District Court in the Ashanti region has granted bail to 43 students of Krobia Asante Technical and Vocational Institutes. Let's Sokari Mampon District Court has granted bail to 43 students of the Krobia Santi Technical and Vocational School in connection with the students' protests which led to the destruction of public and private properties last month. Now, 39 students were earlier remanded and some of them were also um, ar arraigned. Our Middle Belt Bureau Chief Edward Opoma for has more. 
students of Krobia Sante Technical and Vocational School on January 22, 2023, went on rampage and destroyed public and private properties. The motive of the action by the students is not known, but authorities in the school suspect it could be the students were expressing their displeasure over the poor performance of their predecessors in the final exams. 39 students were earlier arraigned and four others were later arrested and put before court. The affected students have been charged with conspiracy to commit crime, with unlawful entry, causing unlawful damage and stealing. Appearing before the Ascariman Pond District Court on Thursday, February 2, the court granted accused persons bail. They have been admitted to bail in a sum of 2,000 Ghana cities each, with one surety who has to be a parent or a guardian. They are also expected to report to the police once a week. Lawyer for all the accused persons, Daniel Kwame Boateng spoke to journalists after the court proceedings. As lawyers, the fact that we defend does not mean we condone and connive with crime. We are only doing our work in the interest of justice and fairness. So if at the end of the day, the prosecution is able to prove their case beyond reasonable doubt, then all of us will be happy because in the end, justice must be seen to have been done. Because at least we are saying that if the crime was even perpetrated, it cannot happen that all these juveniles and the young persons were part. So if at the end of the case and the totality of evidence that will be placed before the court, um, some of them are culpable, the laws of this country will deal with them. So I'm pleased and happy the way the police are doing their work. It can happen that all of them are involved because when such cases happen, the police normally conduct a soup. And the soup means they will just arrest anybody they find within the confined area where the, uh, the crime was perpetrated. So therefore, after the investigation, some of them will be discharged from the offense that have been uh, slapped on their faces. So in the end, when the investigation is complete, you find that most of the juveniles and the young persons may be discharged from the case. The head of legal and prosecutions at the Ashanti Regional Police Command, ACP Kofi Blagoji, on his part, stated that the police are pursuing other suspects as well. well we are only maintaining the old charges, but we only subject the charge sheet because we've got some people arrested. And that is the position of the law. You have to subject the charge sheet and include them. And so this is exactly what we Are you still going after some suspects? Yes, yes. We had information that there are some people involved, so we shall uh, try to see whether we can climb on them. And they add them to the charge. Can you put two number? No, 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 exactly. Now we can't speak of the number now. But can you confirm to us that the school prefect has also been arrested? Yeah, the school prefect is part of those who presented today before the court. The school is yet to be reopened after it was shut down following the disturbances. Officials from the Ghana Education Service say they will provide counseling services to the students when the school resumes. While the police are pursuing the matter in court, a five member committee has been set up to investigate the disturbances at the school. The matter has been adjourned to 2nd of March 2023, and the police say they are still pursuing other suspects. For City News, Edward Upon Marfo, Ascarim Upon District Courts, Ashanti Region. So the matter has been adjourned, and by 2nd of March, it will be recorded, then at least whatever is going to come out of it will hear. But the investigation also, is also ongoing, and also the school is still under lock and key. That is the sad part for me, because mm. uh, following this incident that has happened, mm. almost all the students there that are supposed to be in there and learn have been sent home. I mean, and also the leadership of uh, the school body, uh, the, the student body, uh, the minister, that is the Ashanti regional minister, indicated that mm. uh, they should be declared wanted. <laughs> and from what the report we, that we just aired, the school prefect has also been arrested in, yeah. in connection with this particular issue. It, it's a very sad one. I don't think that this thing should be happening in institutions. I mean, they've seen their brothers and their sisters do it in um, the universities in the name of whole tradition. I'm referring to 
that whole Katanga County clash, mm -hmm. Saba Commonwealth clash at the University of Ghana. They've seen um, them do it and gone scot free by and large. So they feel, well, we can also take the law into our own hands and do as we please. But that is unfortunate. And for me, honestly, I don't even understand where this whole thing started creeping into our schools in the country. Not too long ago, a similar story broke out in one of the schools in the Ashanti region. Um, they were also engaged in similar protests. They turned violent and, and, and stones were held and all of that. I mean, we've known educational institutions in the past to, to proceed on protest based on some really um, solid case they have. So they are either taking on government as a result of maybe increased fees or they are protesting an unpopular mm. management decision. Yeah. But now it's over very flimsy things, it's over um, um, trivial issues. And, and I'm wondering where we are as a country. I mean, if Indicating the, that because their predecessors uh, didn't go through with the WASI or they, they came out with uh, some... Uh, the results weren't good, so they went in to do this. I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense. And not too long ago, we witnessed the issue with Bright SHS, yes. where uh, the, the, the students protested and rebelled against an invigilator who was preventing them from cheating. Mm -hmm. So I'm here and I'm wondering, what, what's really the... Like, why are we going as a people when our knowledge base of the country people who are supposed to gradually come out and be the intellectuals of society are now the ones resorting to um, violence to, to push for their case. It's unfortunate. I think a loophole, really, or the weakest link with some of our schools in this country is the lack of an effective counseling system. So people just go through the school. We, don't, we are not sure of their emotional state. We are not sure of their psychological mm -hmm. state. And, and for some reason, they think violence is the answer to any problem they face. And, and this is where we need to start looking at um, what we are doing to regards to counseling in our schools. But you made something, um, a point, a very important point that they are learning from the Conti, uh, the Kata. Don't you think that these are the individuals who are practicing what they are practicing at the secondary cycle level and they take it to the tertiary institutions? I mean, there will be a few converts along the line, but of course, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not far-fetched. It's really not far-fetched. And I've maintained that the Ghana Education Service should be on red alert mm. with some of these things. They should take it up seriously because you don't, it's like you are just waiting for the day where the worst will probably happen. And, and that shouldn't be. So for me, we need to take it up seriously. We need to intensify counseling in our schools and we need to crack the whip when yeah, it happens. Very I mean, important. If, if we had, we had made a case with regards to criminal prosecution, because some of them are purely criminal. I mean, if a student age 21, goes on the street, takes a stone, helps it at somebody, mm -hmm. I think the law will take it up. State well, prosecution will take it up. So let's not whip. change it yeah. because it's not happening in schools. Mm -hmm. We should still see it as criminal and crack the whip and it will serve as a deterrent. Going Cracking forward. of the whip is very important. But the latest on this issue is that City News checks at the Asokore Mampon District Court in the Ashanti region show that all 30, 43 students of the Krobi Ashanti Technical and Vocational School uh, they have met uh, their bail conditions and the court on Thursday, that is February 2, admitted them to a bail in the sum of 2,000 Ghana cities each, which a surety or one surety who has to be a parent or a guardian. The accused persons are also expected to report to the police once a week. Away from that issue, let's go to the second-hand uh, dealers, or let's go rather, before that, let's go to the private health facilities and Association of Ghana. They have charged the government to expedite actions on the payment of their outstanding NHIS claims. But uh, yeah, let's let's bring you that story if we, we have it. The Private Health Facility Association Ghana has charged the government to expedite actions on the payment of uh, outstanding NHIS claims. Let's bring you that insert. Now, the Private Health Facilities Association, Ghana, has charged the government 
to expedite action on the payment of outstanding National Health Insurance Scheme NHIS claims. The comment is on the back of an announcement by the National Health Insurance Authority, NHIA, of a 50% upward adjustment in tariffs for medicines and services covered by the NHIS. Even though the group applauds the increment, they lament it will be of no use if the government continually delays in the payment of their claims. The following report has more. Prices of medicine under the National Health Insurance Scheme have been increased by 50%. This is according to the National Health Insurance Authority. This increment forms part of efforts to ease the burden on health facilities registered under the scheme. This comes on the back of appeals by the Private Health Facilities Association of Ghana. They had wanted the government to increase the amount it pays for drugs and non-drugs provided under the scheme. The group premised its appeal on the current economic climate. While applauding the government for the increment, the vice president of the association, Samuel Boachi Donko, in a City News interview, urged the government to be swift in the payment of their claims. We are in February. We have not been reimbursed. People, me, last year. So look at all this. So you have a penalty to pay all this from that time up to now. Uh, you have to arrest all this while. You have taken a drug supplies, drugs, non drugs. From that time, you are not paying. You, you are not paying the person. So how? How would this happen? How do you run a health system like this? Of uh, the Private Health Facilities Association of Ghana, they have been raising this for a very long time, following claims, NHIS claims. Some time back, they indicated that if government fails to uh, heed to their calls, they will be compelled to do cash and carry which I don't think is something that would have helped uh, the less privileged because the NHI policy is a poor, poor policy. It's yeah. in there to help the uh, people who are less privileged. So I think that government should heed to their concern, especially when we are in the season that everything, the price of everything is on the rise. Yeah, I mean, we don't want to go back to the days of cash and carry. Mm -hmm. I think that is for sure as a people. Um, those days are, are behind us and so should it be. I mean, it's a sad situation these private um, health facilities find themselves in. I mean, what is their goal? Is it to cripple their business mm. or, or what? And that is why for some of us, and I believe um, other people in the, in the civil society space, I've always raised questions with government's um, very broad and ambitious agenda, one, one, one project, because the view or the idea is that let's prioritize mm. really let's look at the most important challenges confronting healthcare delivery in the country and commit resources and funds towards tackling them first this is one of it because we can't leave healthcare to only state um, um, funded um, facilities i mean collabo will be over collabo will break down mm. if that is mm. the case mm. um, and rich hospital will collapse if that's the case these private health facilities also in a way help with tackling the, 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 the problems we face in healthcare delivery. So the least we can do as a government is to support them, give them their due uh, with regards to this NHI. Exactly. Um, and I mean, it's, it's, it's long overdue. And I think long that it's, it's, it's like it's indicating it's long overdue. At least the private health facilities, must they must also run. And that government has to make their claims available. We know there is no money, but to do what, please do something about the situation. Let's go to the Concerned Secondhand Dealers Association. They are not excited about um, some form of uh, ban or attempt to ban uh, products or appliances. And that is the Energy Commission wants to do. They are asking the Energy Commission to suspend such a decision or such a plan if that will be implemented. Else, they will be forced to take legal actions or embark on a demonstration. Let's bring you that insight. Now, and the Concerned Second Hand Dealers Association says it may resort to legal redress or demonstration if attempts to get the Energy Commission to suspend the ban on the importation of second-hand appliances fails. Now, the Commission a week ago released a statement indicating the implementation of the regulation will be strictly enforced going forward. However, the statement was vehemently resisted by stakeholders in the import sector who say many people may lose their jobs in the process. There's more in the following report. As early as 4 a.m., traders of second-hand clothes gather to make purchases of the used goods referred by many as false or obroni 
These clothes that come in different styles, designs and sizes are imported from across Europe into Ghana for onward sale. This is Cantamanto and it is one of the largest market centers you can find at the central business district of Accra. Now even before the sun is up, you can see brisk business going on. And this is because traders who um, deal in the second-hand clothing have come here to purchase their goods, which would be sorted out later on into several grades. So, you know, when you go into the market, there are times you have to purchase some items or some clothes at higher prices as compared to others. Well, this is because when the sorting is done, it actually determines the price of the goods that will be sold on the market. These goods are patronized mostly by the middle and lower income citizens who believe they are affordable. <laughs> Targa office where the almost share the quick at Rosano, international beyond the near man in the Buono, send any Buono city. Meta says a basset, a mujji, maybe a way, way a quality. Ah, where selection? It was first selection, it was second selection, or third. The attempt by the various institutions to ensure that second hand products are not brought into the country. This is not the first time because. Some time back, I, I don't know whether in the year 20, 2012 or 2013, there about, I was going to buy a refrigerator and I was told that, no, we are not bringing the second-hand ones into the system because it's going to, hold on, because it's not, it's not going to, uh, it's, it's not, uh, was it efficient when it comes to the usage and all that, power efficient and all that. Yeah. Today, we are the same place. The question is, if these things are not brought into the country, mm. uh, do we have ways and means by um, manufacturing some and also selling them at lesser prices as compared to the second-hand ones? <laughs> because we have second-hand uh, well, vehicles, we have second-hand vehicles, we have second-hand fridges, we have we have second-hand TVs and all that. Can we afford the brands? <laughs> I mean, if you go to our energy efficient energy efficient regulation mm -hmm. um, 2008, which stipulated that or which banned the use of the importation of fridges and used used fridges for that, and and um, of course used air conditions and and, and the incandescent mm -hmm. and filament lamps, it was to keep some of what the things are saying mm -hmm. there the potential wrecks with its huge usage. And 14 years on, 15 years on, what did we still see? It was still being imported. You go to the port, people were still bringing it into their country, of course, and um, smuggling through. So me, my concern with this recent ban mm. is the level of enforcement such that it will not be done. That's if government is still going ahead with it. But um, I believe that there should have been some level of, uh, of engagement because if you look at the second-hand dealers, it's quite it's a, it's a really large populace with mm -hmm. regards to people who are engaged in, in the business in the selling of some of these appliances. So, is the plan to just wipe them off their 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 source of livelihood? For me, I think we need a conversation on that, especially when we are not banning second-hand vehicles who who also, to a large extent, um, contribute some level of environmental damage with regards to emissions and all of that. Well, so it's a broad conversation, mm -hmm. and we can't exhaust exactly. it here. But I believe that some, um, some, um, some level of engagement should happen. Maybe not all 19 appliances, or maybe review the appliances mm -hmm. and, and see which ones, particular ones, should, we'll not, still, we'll should not be important. We'll still have conversation on this because I think that a number of people will end up losing their jobs when this is implemented. But, well, uh, the Energy Commission also has its say in it, and also the people who are doing the business have their say in it. You are watching CNR Extra on City TV. Let's go for a commercial break, but when we come back, we'll talk about the, uh, the National Executive Committee meeting of the New Patriotic Party to decide on a date of, for its presidential and parliamentary primaries, which ended inconclusively. Stay with us, we'll be back with that story and more.
Roses are red, violets are blue, Valentine's is approaching, so get ready for Shades of Love 2. Shades of Love with Aquaba 2023 is here again. Get your shade of red or pink outfit ready. Hit up your special one and plan a night of unbelievable fun and a whole lot of love. Listening to Aquaba's back-to-back hits. Shades of Love 2023 with Aquaba will be the night to remember for all those who love love and happening in both Aquaba. Accra and in Kumasi. Date on Valentine's Day, the 14th of February 2023 at La Palm Royal Beach Hotel in Accra and on the 18th of February at Ives Cafe and Grill in Kumasi. Tickets are going for VVIP for 400 Ghana cities, VIP for 300 Ghana cities, standard tickets for 200 Ghana cities and for table bookings and cabanas and all enquiries, kindly call 027-227-7757. Get your tickets at a... City TV and City FM, Joy FM, YFM, Accra Mall, Eliza's Restaurant, Jolie Junction, Metro TV, La Palm Royal Beach Hotel. Shades of Love with Aquaba 2023, it will be awesome. Media Partners. Powered by Think Media Expert. Many thanks for staying with us here on CNL Extra. Now, the National Council of the NPP has endorsed the date of NEC to engage in broader stakeholder consultation before announcing a date for its presidential and parliamentary primaries. The planned National Executive Meeting to set the date and draw up modalities for the two important elections in the party and that inconclusively. We will make sure that we follow the story Kili and bring you all the updates yeah. uh, that will come as a result of this particular issue. But then let's move to another story which has to do with the City FM, City TV Foundation, City Opportunity Project on Education Coop. And the organization had a support from internationally acclaimed mobile tra money, or let's say money transfer company, Tap Tap Send, and they donated some $10,000. Let's bring you that insert. Now, internationally acclaimed money transfer company TapTapSend has donated an amount of 10,000 US dollars towards CTFM and CTTV's foundation um, City Opportunity Project on Education um, to support education in Ghana. Now, COPE is a corporate social responsibility initiative under the City Foundation in support of Ghanaians in need of support. It is an initiative that provides scholarships to brilliant and deprived um, students to further their education. According to the Africa Growth Director of the company, Daryl Koku Mauto Abraham, the decision by the company forms part of the corporate social responsibility aimed at making society a better place for all. The company further pledged to support the COPE initiative in the future to ensure a lot more needy persons but brilliant students are given an opportunity to have their dreams and aspirations met. No, I think it's, uh, I think it's, it's absolutely important that businesses like ours and corporates like ours who serve Ghana and make money in Ghana should support the economy of Ghana and should support the social improvement and impact in Ghana. Mm -hmm. I'm personally very passionate about education. I'm mm -hmm. very passionate about social mobility. I'm very passionate about financial inclusion. Mm -hmm. And all of these things are wrapped into education. Mm -hmm. So I was looking for a project which would be able to achieve all these things. And COPE is one of those ones that I think could definitely achieve it. So if we educate 10 people, educate five people, I think we educate a nation and mm -hmm. we could absolutely advance financial inclusion we could advance social mobility we could we could do a lot with mm. that so i decided to do scope uh, cope and we decided to be partner with cope because we believe it would have a huge impact mm. on the lives of people because our senders who send the money right mm. they appreciate the fact that we are investing in ghana 
They appreciate the fact that we are doing things to advance the Ghana economy. They appreciate the fact that we care deeply mm. about Ghana and we want to do something small to improve mm. um, the, 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 the Ghanaian economy. And the I Ghanaian see. Economy. So this will be... So COPE is a social, corporate social responsibility initiative under the CTFM Foundation in support of Ghanaians in need of support who want to go to the various tertiary institutions yeah. and uh, they are not financially yeah. uh, able to do that but brilliant students let's put it that way yeah. who have been able to excel in their exams or in their various um, say exams to go to the next step in in, in their uh, by Tap Tap Send. Um, yesterday, I listened to the Africa Growth Director on the CBS, and, and for me, it's it's worthy that we commend them for an initiative like that. I mean, we talk about brain drain in the country and how over the years it's been sort of like in some bad light. But after we realized that when these people go overseas, they send a lot of money into the country in the form of remittances and it helps with projects here. Some of them go as doctors, they come back and come and set up a private hospital here and there. All of this in the long run helps with employment in the country. So the sort of brain drain overseas is not necessarily a bad thing. It has its positives too, if you want to look at it. I mean, look at the numbers, for instance, about 4.7 billion um, in personal remittances was sent into Ghana and only 2022 alone. So um, you, you get the impression that we are a growing economy, still import driven. So some of these things are expected. The average Ghanaian outside is about $10,000. Mm -hmm. And this is mm -hmm. according to um, the Tap Tap Send mm -hmm. director. So for me, we commend them. Um, I follow their progress as a company. And I think they are doing some really amazing job with regards to sending and receiving money. So good yeah. move by Tap Tap Send, an internationally acclaimed money transfer company. You're for your time and keep watching CCTV.